Hello and welcome to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, the Flash Forge Adventure 3. So this is um, a relatively small desktop printer. Uh, build volume is only 150 cubed, so 150, 150, 150. Um, it is a bone tube, but the material goes inside of this little side panel here. Um, it has, it does suffer from the same issue that the Creator 3 suffers from, which is that, um, which is that you can only fit certain types of filament spools in the side, but you can run it again externally. It's fully enclosed so it will print PLA, PEG, ABS, all of those things really no issue. Um, it's 280 uh, max on the hot end and uh, 110 degrees max on the bed. What makes this so enticing is it's an entry level printer that you could easily put in a print space, in a you know in a maker space or something like that. £325 currently. Um, we found that price on Amazon. All right, it isn't the world's largest build volume and it's Bowden, so that means you're not going to be able to print um, a lot of flexibles and things like that. To be clear, we have printed Ninja Flex um, with this, both their Cheetah TPU and their regular TPU, um, and it's come out quite nicely. I'm always dubious about that when it comes to. Um, when it comes to Bowden setups, but I mean, this genuinely just chucks through everything we needed to. It's Wi-Fi enabled as well, so you can um, so you can use their uh, you can use their uh, cloud-based software. Again, you're still using Flash Print for this, although because it's not got a webcam or dual extruders and things like that, you can output in a GX format from Simplify and from Cura. Just takes a little bit more tweaking to get those profiles right. Um, again, if you were putting this into a makerspace, um, I would absolutely say to everyone, you're using the stock profiles on Flash Print, um, and they will get genuinely, repeatably good results. Um, it's a lovely little machine. It's something that if you're not doing large pieces, things like what we've got in front of us here, if you're doing regular sized normal objects, um, you know, you'll get you'll get really good results from it. So let's take a look at how some of it printed and, uh, and we'll go through the models that we've got. Okay, so we've got the obligatory two wavy vases. And um, these are important models for a couple of reasons. They really show off cooling, they show off overhangs, they show off consistency. Vase mode is notorious for if you've got bad extrusion, you're not gonna be able to get good results on vase mode because it's all surface finish, all of it. Um, you can see nice and flat on the base of that and uh, they came out really nicely. We did this little Oscar and again, that's in a silk PLA, came out really, really nicely. This is a wood-based PLA and came out really nice. There's a little bit of um, there's a little bit of stringing in between some of the slats, but that's just a profile tune. You know, we, we were printing that pretty much on a regular PLA piece. And then this is the obligatory benchy. So as you can see, really, really smooth. That's about one of the best benches I've seen. Um, you can see that the PLA really stuck to the base of that as well. Um, and uh, yeah, came out really nice. And then we've got this little box. This is uh, one of the things we use for our business cards. Um, so we can just take the lid off and there's normally business cards in there. But really, really nice, super clean. The base came out really good, all the overhangs came out nice. Uh, this prints with no supports, even though it's a window, and you can actually see that it's done that bridging really, really nice there as well. Great little machine. So, final thoughts. It's not the biggest build volume in the world. It really isn't. 150 by 150 by 150 um, is actually smaller than the Prusa Mini, and the Prusa Mini is pretty small. Um, so uh, the only real gripe I have about the machine is this enclosed spool holder. It just, 
You just have to be careful with some of the spools that you buy. Um, most good spool place, uh, filament suppliers, they will tell you the physical size of the spool. So you'll be able to make sure that you, uh, that you can fit it in there. In a worst case scenario, the side panel comes off and you can just run your filament ex externally if you needed to. Um, there's not actually really any, there's not really any windows or anything into the machine on the side. So I challenge you probably could even print your ABS if you were doing that. You're not going to cause yourself too many, too many issues. Um, but overall, it's a, it's a nice little machine. Um, it does, as I say, it does everything that um, Arif needs it to down the shop. So 3D Fireprint do use this as one of their everyday runners. Um, they use it to print out small parts and you know, generally speaking, you know, we're not doing huge massive prints every single day, so we don't need the likes of the CR10 Max and things like that. And at 349 pound, that is a solid machine to start a maker space with, to do some entry level 3D printing pieces. It's not going to print an industrial grade filament, and that's absolutely fine because that's not what this machine is for. If you need industrial, you know, you go for their Guider 2S, you go for their uh, Creator 3 or something like that. But overall, a nice little machine. Thanks for joining us, guys, and I'll see you soon.